Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my channel. And welcome to um, the second in my black and white series. Now, the goal of this series is to teach techniques, um, caning, and some other things uh, that will eventually be used to make a major piece. Not necessarily this one. Um, I'll decide about that as we go on because I'm going to be teaching a lot of black and white techniques to you. Uh, but once again, the goal is to use them together in a piece at the end. All right, so today we're going to do a very basic cane. It's a basket weave. Now, if you have any experience caning, you probably don't even want to watch today because this is, as I said, and as you know, one of the most basic canes you can make. But if you're a beginner, then I hope you watch um, because I find canes like this, you know, it's simple, but I really think that it's a great supporting player in a lot of instances. So I actually use this quite a bit. So that's what we're going to do. Now, if you look at this cane, you can see, what do you see really when you look at it first? You see a lot of white. Well, Let's say you want to make a cane that has more black than white, where the field is darker. Um, that's easy enough to do, and I think that's what we'll do today so you can see the difference. Okay, so the first thing we do is we make a bullseye cane with white in the center. Now, this has been rolled through the thickest setting of the pasta machine, and it's two inches wide. So I'll cut a little bit off the end at an angle, turn it around, roll it up. And at the other end, I'll make another angled cut. I tend to make my canes rather on the smaller side than the larger side. Now here I'm just taking my brass rod, and you'll see me do this a lot when I'm caning, just to integrate that cut edge into the body of the cylinder. I find it a little easier. I have black clay on my hands all over the place. Okay, so that looks good. And the finished dimension, let's just take a quick measurement, is about one inch by two inches. All right, let's take the black. This has been rolled through the thickest setting in the pasta machine. I'm going to cut a straight edge this time. And I'm going to wrap it around. And today I'm going to try to keep my hands under my camera. I have to apologize. I tend to wander. My mind wanders. I get caught up into what I'm doing. And then I completely forget that I'm actually shooting. And that I have to keep my hands under the camera. Okay, so this is probably what I did before. So you can see that it's a rather large white center and then one thick wrap. Okay, I'm going to join them once again with my brass rod. Okay, let's wrap it again. This cane will have a larger black field. There will be more black than in the cane that I showed you in the necklace. You know, there's no right or wrong. This is not more right. It, it really is just a preference. 
you join them. Smooth. And let's get that clay joined. Just faster. All right, so now I have a double wrap around the white. Now, I'm going to take, actually, you know what? Let's go even more extreme. I'm going to put one more wrap around so you can see. So I'm going completely in the opposite direction. But why not? Now this clay, of course it's Kato Poly clay because that's all I use. And uh, it started out as my scrap and I mixed the black out in it to make my black clay. I have to tell you, I love that black out. I love it. All right, so let's reduce this. And you can see that the white is rather soft. See how it's starting to come out? That's actually, in my opinion, better than the center hanging back. I can always sort of pull the clay from the outside up if I have to. Okay. It's easier to push this white back in than it is to pull it out. A lot easier. And of course I'm doing a lot of twisting and I'm trying to keep my hands under my camera. So let's take this out uh, between 8 and 10 inches. He's getting that nice. It's at the point where you know it's nice and you can just stretch it. All right, let's measure. <laughs> okay, that's 10 inches. Let me cut the ends off. Okay, that's one end, and let's cut the other end. Cut a little bit further in. Okay, so this is what we have, just regular old bullseye. Now the last class I did had the was the sizzling rice cane well the last class for this series and basically we're going to make the sizzling rice cane and then we're going to put four of them side by side Like so. Okay. All right. So let's flatten them. 
I want to flatten my pieces. I, I don't ordinarily do it like this. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I do I do clay like my mother cooked. I say this a lot. She was a great cook, but she never did anything exactly the same way twice. It's perfect for clay. All right, so I've sort of flattened them. And let me just even them out with my fingers. This one got very large in the middle. So I'll even that out, put that on top. Let's take this one, do the same thing. Turn them sideways. And then we've got the last one. And put that sideways. So now I've got four up. And I'm going to turn this into a square. How about that? I use my handy dandy brayer. Okay, I think I will reduce this out maybe eight inches. And right now it's, this clay is really nice and soft. It's reducing beautifully. Uh, it's hanging back a little on the center there. I'm not too concerned. But um, when you're reducing something square, sometimes you get to the point where you just grip one end, you take your other hand, and you stroke, and as you stroke, you're pulling. You can see I'm pulling with my left hand. Stroke, pull. Pull and stroke. And I find that I get a good even reduction, and my square canes end up with pretty nice corners. Okay, good. All right, let's see what we've got. Nine inches. Okay, so let's cut off the ends. Actually, I'll squish it back together a bit. That's good. Cut off the end, see what we've got. I can cut a little further in. Yeah, that's okay. They don't all look the same, obviously, and you know that's the good and the bad thing about caning. They don't always look the same, which is good, and they don't always look the same, which is bad. All right. There's my eight inches, stretch it out a little bit. Now divide it into four. Okay, here we go. One. Then you're going to take the next one and the 
the pattern runs perpendicular to the first. Then let's go. This one will run perpendicular to the second. This one runs perpendicular to the third and perpendicular to the first. So you can see how much more black I have in this particular basket weave pattern. Okay, let me grab the other one and I will show you in case you don't remember. This was the initial one. You see how much white is in there? And here is the one I just made. A lot more uh, black, less white. And the way that was done was simply by wrapping more black around the white. All right, so that is the basket weave. I'm not going to reduce it further, not right now, because I think you know how that's done. So this is the second in our black and white series, the basket wave. If you've liked it, please like, uh, and please subscribe if you want to know. Well, that was a rather strange end to that last part of this tutorial. So I thought, you know what? I'll come back and say a proper goodbye. But as I was preparing to do that, I thought, well, why don't we do one more, th one more thing? So I took, uh, I took the cane and I reduced it slightly. So I just have a little more length. Picked up a little piece of magenta along the way. That's okay. Let me clean my blade and let's cut this in half. Now we have this nice square basket weave. Uh, but what happens if we change the orientation? In other words, it is now square, but why don't we push these corners in? All right. And why don't we make a new square and see what happens to the pattern? We could even make it round. But sometimes interesting things happen if you simply change the orientation. And why not try? Right? Just gonna push that down, push it down, push it down. The outside moved a lot more than the middle. Okay, so I believe I believe the person who started doing this, this uh, reorientation type of thing was Sandra McCaw. And if you have not seen her work or her canes, you really should because they're very beautiful, kind of delicate and beautiful. Graceful, I would say. All right, so let's take a cut and see. Okay. Well, I really like that. I like it a lot, and I think it will be very useful in the piece we make at the end. So now we have basically too, because when we put this together, let me just do it really quickly. 
weave that one like that. Well, let's see what happens if we just push it, put it together. So we'll cut it in half. Then we can put it back together like this. It's rather nice. I'm gonna cut it into four pieces so we can play with the way they come together. Yeah, I really like that. But you also get this kind of look to it too. So from the basket weave, we can go to a pattern like this simply by reshaping and reorienting this so the corners become the flat, flat, and we pull the points of the square out from the sides. All right, so that's it for this class. Thanks for watching, and until we meet again, bye. Okay, I bet you thought you were rid of me, but you're not. I'm back again. Because, and I'll tell you the way I do clay. Um, obviously, you've probably noticed that many times I don't really have a plan. Things just happen, and then I think, oh, i got to show you this. Oh, i got to show you that. And so in that way, I'm more, um, I bushwhack my way through clay. Bushwhacking is where you go in one direction, and then you run into an obstacle, and then you go in another direction, and you go, and you just kind of wander through, and eventually you get to the, to your destination. So I tend to bushwhack my way through clay. So we started by making, actually we started by making this humble bullseye. This is way bigger than the one we made before. But then we turned it into a basket weave. This was a very simple process. Then I took the basket weave and I turned it into this cane that looks like wheat. Doesn't that look like wheat sheaths, sheaves? And then I thought, well, you know, I can go a little farther. I can make this basket weave and show you how to do this. So then we have these three options, not just one. So many of the processes, of course, are the same as this. But the scale is different, right? This is a much finer pattern. And that's what I wanted because I believe that that variation in the scale of the pattern and the pattern itself is really going to be helpful when we get down to making our ultimate major piece in black and white. So let's get started. Now, I'm going to try my best not to repeat too much because you've already seen so much of it. So this is a really large bullseye and I made it big because, you know, I may find something else I want to show you out of this bullseye. So you certainly don't have to make it this large. Remember, I mean, basically our goal together in this series of black and white canes is just to make enough to make maybe a pod or maybe a disc or maybe we'll make a bracelet. We don't really know yet, but you don't have to take pounds of clay to do any of these processes because each of the things we do potentially is just a part of that finished piece and it's potentially just a small part. So you don't have to make huge, huge things for this particular series to get to where we're going. All right. Now, I'm going to reduce this. Now, uh, it's a very large white center, white core, and um, I wrapped it with three thick wraps of black. And still, relatively, there was more black here. In other words, the white was smaller, and the black wraps were as thick as this. So, it's not going to look exactly the same. So I'm just going to quickly reduce it. The center white is nice and soft. And I like it that way because it's easier for me to reduce. And when the white comes popping out, to actually push it back in. That's easier than trying to pull the white out if it's too hard. So let me reduce this. I will reduce it between, I would say, 
three quarters of an inch and an inch. Now, I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'll probably only use half, maybe two thirds of this and reserve the other. So I will be back. All right, so I've reduced this out and uh, I've got about four inches here and I have cut off and I have reserved about two inches for another use. Now, here's the thing about this cane. Uh, it requires it requires a fair amount of clay um, because you reduce it and you reduce it and you reduce it and you've got all this this very small rectangle and then you have to cut it and put it all back together again. So it takes quite a bit, uh, quite a few of these pieces to make the pattern. Now, that's why this is a rather large piece of clay. So let's just measure this. Okay, so this is like an inch one and one eighth and, and one and one eighth inch in diameter for the white. The black is three approximately three sixteenths of an inch, and then the length is four inches, including the kind of sloppy end, okay. So this is this is a a, a good sized um it's a good sized bullseye but I'm going to need quite a few pieces so let me reduce this out to between mm, and let me reduce this out to about an inch in diameter no 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 Maybe, maybe in total, in total, across the whole thing. So I'll be back. Okay, so uh, for some reason my camera turned off, so I don't know where it left off. But what I did was I, um, I reduced to about three quarters of an inch and then I flattened it with my hands and then I flattened it with my acrylic rod. And this thing is long. So let me just give you a length. It's 12, 15 inches long. That's what happened when I reduced it to that diameter and then flattened it further. Now, of course, I'm going to be rolling this through my pasta machine on the thickest setting, and when I roll it through, it's gonna get wider, isn't it? It's just gonna get wider. So I'm going to stretch it to make it narrower because it's going to get so wide. Okay. So it is now, oh, one inch wide. That's pretty darn wide. This is going to be wide, 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 but, you know, I'm going to reduce it, so. Okay, here we go. This end goes on the rollers. So let me reset my machine, make sure that I'm on the thickest setting, and let's roll this puppy through. So I have a mile of this now. So I'm just going to fold it in half. Oh, whew. Fold it in half. Like that. It's going to be a while before you can see the whole thing because it's really long. Okay. Now let's cut this one in half. Cut the end off. Cut the end off. 
and uh, let's just quickly you know what I'm just going to do it I'll just fold it in half ordinarily I would measure and cut because uh, the act of folding creates kind of creates waste so but I'm not going to do that so you're going to want to actually measure to find the center but I'm just going to fold it because I don't want to take the time to do it okay arg all right here we go mm -hmm. or this is the lazy man's way of measuring fold it and then when you get to the actual folded part just take your blade and cut across. Flatten and push them together. Okay, so what have we got so far? <laughs> Ta-da! Da, 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 da. And I want eight across. If you look at the pattern, you can see it's eight lines. And at this point, I think I can actually measure and cut. Twelve. Oh, almost fourteen. So I will cut this to almost seven. Okie dokie. Let's put them together. Let's put them together. And there are our eight. Now, one thing about this, when I made this, and I'm just smoothing everything down now. Okay, I, I want to maintain a nice rectangle shape, so I'm going to make this thinner and uh, try to make, keep the same uh, height. But let's look at this for a moment. Do you see right here where these two slices meet? It, there's very little separation between them. And I don't like it because then this it, it doesn't look like they're separate pieces. It looks like they're part of the same piece that's kind of this odd, odd shape. So I want more separation between these. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take more clay. I'm going to roll it very, very thin. And I'm going to put a sheet on this side. And I'm going to put a sheet on this side. And... You, have, you want to make it really, really thin. Because remember, they're going to meet. So they're going to be twice the thickness. Okay? So let me do that, and then I'll be back, and we'll kind of continue reducing this. All right, so I did one side, and it occurred to me I should probably do this with you or show you. So this was rolled, this sheet was rolled through setting number seven. So on my atlas that starts at zero, it's quite thin. All right, so let's put the other side on. And what I'm hoping is to get that separation between between them that I didn't get the last time I made the cane. All right. Because it clearly, there's so little separation between the slices that it looks like one piece and I didn't want it to look that way. I wanted it to kind of look like separate pieces and maybe they even overlap a little. You know, and to achieve that I needed something that would separate them. Okay, so let's just flatten this out. Now you can tell that this is a very fussy cane kidding it's not fussy at all it's one of those canes that 
you know, it's not like a face cane where if the eye is in the wrong place, you know it. This is one of those canes where, yeah, it's, you know, there's some margin for error here. All right, so now I'm going to reduce this. And I want this to be really small. So there's going to be a lot of reduction. I'll show you. It's going to be like... Maybe this size. Maybe even smaller. So I'm going to go from this, this, to that. Maybe even a little smaller. So let me get that done. And I'll be back with about 10 miles of this. All right. Well, I'm back. And I didn't end up with 10 miles, but I ended up with a lot. Here's one end. And here is the other end. Okay. The thing about this cane, though, is that you don't reduce it. You're making, you're making it more or less to size, and that's why you end up with so mm, such a long piece that you have to deal with because you're not reducing the cane. You are making it to size. Okay, so I'm going to cut this into, I would say, one and one-half inch pieces. Okay, maybe I'll cut it into two inch pieces this time. Now, this time I cut this into one inch. So I'm going to cut this one into two inches. Okay. Two inch pieces. Oops. Oopsie. Okay, boink. Boink. Boink, boink. Boink, boink, boink. Okay, now I've got a bunch of them. I have a bunch. Now let's put these together. Now the reason why I'm saying a bunch is because, well, I have a bunch of them. And um, sometimes I have more and sometimes I have less. And I don't, what I'm trying to say is, uh, I don't think you guys should be at all worried if you don't have as many as I do or you know you're gonna have as many as you have all right so that's the first thing now the next thing is to take another piece and position it like so then we'll take another piece and position this one like this. So it starts looking like dunk, 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 dunk. Uh, I don't know what this is called exactly. And you can certainly put yours in a different, you can create a different pattern. Okay, now let's put this one this way. And, you know, I'm not even sure this is a real weave. I, I, I don't even know if you could actually do this. It's just, I don't know. It seems like the way things fit together. Now, ideally, and I didn't really pay much attention, but this should be, of course, longer you should have a long side and a short side. Okay. Like so. Uh, 
that. Let me squeeze it and make one side a little bit longer. Like so. And you know what you can see? See the difference between these two? Well, you can... This is a slightly bolder pattern. Not a lot, but it is bolder. But you can see that there's much more separation between the various pieces because of that extra black. So that was a good call on my part. Yay me. Okay, so here we go. I'll just put a few more pieces on. I'm gonna just squeeze a bit and fit it together like so. Okay. And then, da da da. Like so. And let's put one more here. Now you might be asking yourself, how the heck is she going to cut that? Well, you know, it's a really good question. It's a very good question. So I'll show you. I cut a flat edge, but one side is irregular like that. Okay? And, very important, you want to reserve and save a piece of this original weave, the original piece, because when you go to use this, there will be many times when you have to fill spaces in, and you will cut individual pieces off of this one to finish the pattern. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut carefully down like so and make a nice flat side which is where I will cut. I will just cut like this. like so. So when I use it, I will make cuts like that. That was really bad cut. So let me just cut on the other side and show you. Yeah, I mean, this is such an irregular shape. There's no way I will ever be able to reduce it. So we make it to the finished size and then we, we use it that way. Okay, so that is the second basket weave. Don't forget, keep this. This is what will complete any pattern on anything that you choose. Okay, so now this time I'm really saying goodbye, unless I think about something, doing something else. But I think I will resist. So until the next black and white whatever, uh, goodbye.